In this video, we're going to show you three different ways to connect your DJ controller to an audio mixer. There are a lot of different benefits of doing this. We're going to discuss that, a little bit of theory, and show you all the tips and tricks along the way to make sure that your DJ set is sounding as good as possible. In this video today, we're using the Mackie ProFX 6V3. This is an awesome audio mixer. It has a whole bunch of features that we're going to walk through later in this video. Another mixer that's probably worth considering for DJs is the Yamaha MG10XU. It has a couple extra features that the Mackie doesn't, but I do think the Mackie really does hit the sweet spot of what DJs really need and really want when they're looking for an audio mixer to go with their DJ controller. Now, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find everything that we show you in this video from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Okay, so first of all, why do you need an audio mixer for your DJ controller? Doesn't your DJ controller have enough functionality, inputs, outputs, headphone, microphone inputs? And the answer really is no. Once you connect an audio mixer to your DJ controller, you get a whole bunch of different options. First of all, you get high quality microphone preamps. If you've ever noticed that your microphone input on your DJ controller is really hissy or staticky or just a lot of white noise that comes with it, that's because the microphone preamp is not that good. Second of all, you get phantom power. That's a little button on most audio mixers that will power condenser microphones. So for the first time, you can now use a condenser microphone, which gives more detail and clarity. You're not just stuck with dynamic microphones, even though dynamic microphones are maybe more common in live sound. The next feature that you get is a lot of audio mixers will have a small effects engine. I'm sure we've all DJed weddings or corporate events where there is some sort of special music type function. Somebody's going to get up and sing. Sometimes it is nice to have a little bit of reverb that you can put on that microphone. Typically something like that is not included in lower budget audio DJ controllers. So that is a nice feature to have on here as well. The next big benefit is that the audio mixer will take everything together and you can mix it together and then it sends it through a single stereo output. Now that stereo output is typically XLR or balanced quarter inch, which plays really nicely with most powered speakers that you want to use, 12, 15 inch powered speakers, powered subwoofers, anything like that. All of that runs on XLR. Another big benefit of audio mixers like this, both of these audio mixers in front of me have USB outputs. So that means that you can use it as a streaming mixer. So if you're wanting to DJ live sets online, or if you're just wanting to record a copy of your set from a live event, maybe give it to the client to add some value to your services or record it for your own sake, just so you can keep a library of stuff that you've done for your own marketing purposes or something like that. The USB output on the back of the audio mixer is a really helpful tool for something like that. Okay, the last thing that we need to cover before we can get into connecting everything together properly is the difference between a line level, RCA level, and a mic level signal. This is really important because you don't want to be plugging a line level output into a mic level input. That's when you'll get things like clipping and distortion and audio degradation. So let's just quickly go through it now. XLR and quarter inch outputs generally come out at about 0 dB or plus 4 dB depending on the manufacturer. RCA outputs come out at minus 10 dB. So your RCA output of your DJ controller is 10 to 14 dB quieter than XLR or quarter inch outputs. Now when we compare that to what this microphone is outputting right now, the microphone is 20 to 40 dB quieter than even the RCA outputs on your audio mixer or your DJ controller. So you can see right there that there's a delta of 20 to 40 dB, depending on exactly what you're doing, between the line level outputs on the back of your DJ controller and the XLR mic level inputs on your audio mixer. So if you are connecting your DJ controller to your audio mixer, basically your last choice is to take your line level outputs into the XLR mic level inputs on your audio mixer. Much better would be to connect to the line level inputs on your audio mixer. Now, nine times out of 10, that will look like some type of quarter inch input. You can see over here on the Yamaha, there's RCA inputs as well. These are increasingly less common 
And you can see even for the RCA inputs that are on the Yamaha audio mixer, there are backup quarter inch inputs. And that's what we're gonna use mostly in this video today. Okay, so for option one here, if your DJ controller has RCA outputs, you're gonna want a cable like this that will take RCA out of your DJ controller and convert it to a quarter inch so we can connect that to the quarter inch line level inputs on your audio mixer. A cable like this is unbalanced, so you don't wanna run it longer than 10 or 15 feet, or you might get static buzzing or hissing or something like that. Okay, let's connect it now. Now one note for this, if you are connecting with cables like this, red is always in the right size. Red to red and then red to right on this end. Okay, let's turn it up. So we turned up our DJ controller here. Next we need to turn up the input on our audio mixer. And now you can hear that it is working for you. So this is option number one. Okay, so for option number two, if your DJ controller has quarter inch outputs, you're gonna want a cable like this. This is a quarter inch TRS cable. You could theoretically run this up to a thousand feet with no audio degradation because this cable is balanced. Now, as you can see here, my DJ controller does not have quarter inch outputs, but it would be exactly like the last step where you take quarter inch outputs out of your DJ controller and connect that to the line level input on your audio mixer. Okay, so for option number three, if you have XLR outputs on the back of your DJ controller, you'll need an XLR female to quarter inch TRS cable. This works really well. This is fully balanced. So again, you could run this theoretically up to a thousand feet with no hissing or buzzing, but this will work for the purposes of our video. We're gonna connect this now. Okay, now that we've connected it, let's turn it up. And you can see there that it does work. So again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that we showed you in this video, we do have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.